I survived Minecraft Hardcore for 300 days. As I do this series, I have only one quest, to become as OP as possible. That means getting unlimited gold, unlimited emeralds, iron, diamonds, totems, gunpowder, you name it, I'm gonna get it. At times, things got very intense and it took everything I had to survive. I also managed to build some insane creations which you have to see. I'm aiming for 2 million subs this year. This video took hours and hours to make, so if you enjoy it then please, please could you remember to subscribe. You won't regret it. Now first on the agenda is an adventure. An adventure involving Wither Skulls. And the fortress in this biome is going to get the most spawning. And there's Wither Skull number one. Another one, perfect. And that's the third one. That was really quick as well. And for the first time, I can use my lodestone compass to find my portal. Once again, I have run out of firework rockets. I think it's time I got a gunpowder farm done sooner rather than later. I realise now I have seven wither skulls. Four in my inventory, two down here, and one in my bedroom. My master plan for battling the wither is to go all the way down to bedrock level and summon it somewhere down here. And then the theory is that whilst I'm battling it, it will hopefully reveal some diamonds. All right, here we go. The battle has begun. Probably not have to bore you with many details. It's doing half a heart of damage. Pathetic effort. <laughs> I better eat now. I'm, I'm, I'm down to seven hearts. But yeah, even on hardcore mode, the wither is very, very easy. Okay, wait, I need to pick up the nether star before it gets burnt. <laughs> Sadly, no diamonds from that. But I can now get to work on making a new beacon. I'm thinking right about here could be a cool place to put a load of beacons. What I've just built here might look like a bit of a mess. But eventually, I want one of every beacon. Yes, that includes netherite. So I want to build a bit of a podium sort of area to put all these beacons. So starting with a gold one here and an emerald one here seems like a good place to start. Let's do some more villager curing, place more of these blocks. I can already see that this is going to take me a long time. I can't wait any longer, this mountain has got to go. I plan for this middle one to eventually be a netherite beacon, but since that is going to take a very, very long time, I've placed stone bricks inside just so it doesn't look as messy. But it seems like over here we've got some fellas that want a bit of a party. What do you reckon, do we take them on and then put this village through a raid? Alright good sir, you are going to be the first guy to go down. I now have the bad omen effect. Although the sun is setting, I don't really want to do a raid in the middle of the night. So let's quickly get some sleep and begin the raid. That's it guys, panic. There is so many villagers here. I didn't realise it was this full. You guys came from the wrong side. For some reason, there's two iron golems out there already. In fact, by the time I've got it here, they've already finished the job. Once again, they have been stupid and come from over there. I've got to get in and at least do something. Looks like they've got wise to it and they're going from a different angle. Even against a ravager, this bow is pretty powerful. For some reason, they're all down there. Are you guys Playing some grand sneak attack or something. That guy just got blown up by a creeper. I cannot find this final guy anywhere. And no matter where I tried, the bell isn't revealing his location. So I'm going to put this raid on hold for now and go and get more gold. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how to get rid of a lot of lag. I'm going to put some lava underneath this dispenser so that that isn't a problem in the future. And I have a lot more gold blocks. Hopefully this will be enough. I should probably do some research on how many blocks you actually need for a full beacon. You may think that I've run out, but don't worry. In my ender chest, I've got 42 more. And that is the first full beacon. Finally, I've tracked down this last guy. He's underneath me. You could, sir, have caused me a lot of trouble. Just get out of it. Oh my goodness, he almost killed me. This creeper's everywhere. This, this is going to get bad. This is going to get very bad indeed. We're all right. I don't know how, I'm on one heart. I don't know how I live to tell the tale there. Thankfully, the golems are already doing good work once again. Let's get rid of all these fellas. Once again, the stupid pillager has spawned down there. One of these vexes has got a fire aspect sword. I didn't even know that was a thing. And now they're coming at the other side. I'm so glow, I'm so low, I'm a half a heart. I've got to run for my life here. These big guys are not to be messed with, but it was all to no avail. And there we have it, the victory. The fireworks are being set off. I am now the hero of the village. These totems can go in here. I can now craft another beacon and place it down on the first of my podiums. And I guess I get the beaconator achievement because it's a full beacon. I think I'm going to use this one to give me resistance too. Not that useful since it only works up to about this point. But I plan to eventually have loads and loads of beacons. I've made more great progress on the emerald front. Although there's still lots of blocks to go. I feel like I have a real shortage of quartz so I'm going collecting more. Oh my goodness, what? I just found ancient debris all the way up here. Two of them, that's the last thing I expected to find. I've now got nearly three stacks of quartz, that should be enough. Look at this, we've got new young ones coming through. The thing that I want to build next is going to be down here. I'm going to fill this part in with quartz. I'm building an AFK sugarcane farm, by the way, if I didn't already say. These walls can be quartz as well. So I'll be using the water to push the sugarcane into a hopper right here. I'm also going to add a bit of light to the room. I realise I need more quartz for the observers, so we're back to the nether. In the last episode, I spent stacks and stacks of iron on loads and loads of golems, and <laughs> now I don't have enough. Look at this, we've just discovered a a little mob spawner. This might be worth preserving. I'm going to torch it up. You never know. There's no point in destroying it just in case. And a music disc. I've already got that music disc though. 
And I've already got that music disc. <laughs> Thankfully, the caves around my house just seem to be full of it. I can get so much iron so, so fast. Now I can load up my blast furnaces. I can craft a load of observers with all this new iron. Craft a load of pistons. And then get to work on the redstone. So the pistons are going to come all the way along here. And then on top of them, I'm going to place observers. Then a load of redstone around the back of these observers. A few torches to keep things light. And now every time a piece of sugarcane grows to three high... It harvests it, and that's then where the hopper comes in. I also need a lot of glass for this. Also got a very nice little storage system set up. I'm getting so, so close. I think I'm one block away now. All of my glass has smelted. I'm going to harvest this sugar cane since I think I might need it. Let's plant these all along here. Might as well fill these hoppers as well. And let's fill all of this in with glass. I'm going to trade with these guys, and I think it's the final emeralds that I need. I also realise that these guys will also take string which I get a lot from from bartering. Let's craft that final block. And there we go. Full beacon number two. I've also once again run out of quartz. Thankfully, finding it and mining it is super, super easy. And I also need more blackstone. I can now finish this section with these cracked blackstone bricks. And I also have the quartz to do this room. I'm going to make some powered rails, a hopper. In fact, make that two hoppers. And then I can make a minecart hopper. And I'm just going to use this to pick up any excess sugarcane. I need a hopper going into that. A rail on top of there. I'm going to have to do something like this to get the minecart moving. I'm going to replace all this sugarcane. Put the glass back. And this is now well and truly finished. And now I'm going to sit here and wait till something happens. And there we go. It worked. And now that another farm is finished, I really want to try and find a jungle. I have been to one before, but I can't quite remember where it was. I'm very glad to say, I think I found the same jungle that I went to before. I should probably sleep before I do anything else. Oh no, there's, there's a creeper coming. Quick, wake up. Wake up, Esprit. Get out of there. <laughs> that was close. That was like a nightmare that came true right after I woke up. And what do we have here? Anything good? You know what? You don't normally get two golden apples in one chest. And this is what I came for. A new pet. A pet parrot. There we go. We've got him. He now lives on my shoulder as I explore the world. Because my parrot doesn't properly teleport if I fly, I'm having to go back on foot. And just to be clear, that means I've got to run 8,000 blocks. It took a long time, but I finally brought home a pet parrot. Now you have somebody to keep me company, buddy. And because of all the running you just made me do... I'm going to call you Runner. Even though parrots don't technically run, they actually fly. And I wish to find a villager that will sell me Sharpness 5. It's entirely possible that I accidentally killed the villager that gave me Sharpness 5. <gasps> I am so sorry. That was an act. I didn't know there was a hole there. Now I've got to do a villager rescue mission. Whilst we're down here, any chance I can exploit you for easy enchantments? At long last, a Sharpness 5 book. Now, good sir, this may look like I'm abandoning you, but one day... I will be back. I'm going to box you in so nothing can hurt you. You've got absolutely nothing to worry about. Yeah, he's never seen the light of day again. Most importantly now, I can add sharpness 5 to my netherite axe. Also, it seems to annoy you guys that my sword is called Diamond Sword 1, but it would cost me 39 levels to rename it. I'm not doing that. Why on earth, when I make one tiny hole in the corner, do all of you fall in it? I have to know how powerful this axe is. Okay, it can't want to awoke. <laughs> not powerful enough. Might as well just use this sword. And don't worry, even though it's going to be a load of extra effort, I am going to rescue this guy. I've just got to fill this up with kelp and then break it all. Just need to borrow this door temporarily. Put it right there. Now I just have to get this guy to cooperate. <laughs> up he goes. There you go, mate. Safe and sound. I know I've spent a lot of time exploiting these guys, but... I have a soft spot for them in my heart. Looks like the sugar cane farm is working well. I feel like it's about time I patched up holes like this. At some point, and this is a project that's quite a bit down the line, I think it'd be really cool to make an AFK tree farm, which from what I understand involves using a wither. I just got a stack of logs from one of those trees. That's crazy. Do you ever get the feeling like you're being watched, guys? They just won't leave me alone. From now on, I'm only mining giant spruce trees. I have over 10 stacks of logs, and that is equal to over 5,000 emeralds. Time to get incredibly incredibly rich. To be honest, I have no idea what I'm going to do with all these emeralds now. Since I've been doing so many exciting things, guys, I thought I'd slow it down a bit and do some fishing. Don't worry, I don't actually want to fish. I just need it so I can get some cats. Okay, I'm bored already. Let's do it the manual way. In fact, I can get an achievement called tactical fishing here. Look at that. Right, let's release you. And then the axe is going to go to town on these guys. I have 23 fish in total. I think that should be enough for now. And I'm now going to spend a bunch of time AFK at my XP farm. I then spent five days sitting at the XP farm getting to level 300. 308 levels and two stacks of blocks should be enough for me. And now it is time I created one of the most OP farms in Minecraft. 
And there's you thinking the gold farm was OP. I'm going to be creating a raid farm. This is going to get me unlimited totems of dying, even more emeralds. It'll also get me things like gunpowder and redstone. It's just a very OP farm and it's not going to take that long to make. Turns out I also need a cake to do this. It has taken me so, so long to gather up all these resources. But once I have six buckets of lava, I will have everything that I need. I filled up these two shulker boxes and now I can build this over an ocean. I almost forgot, I also need kelp. I just realized that if you go backwards underwater with your elytra flight, you actually fly upside down. What the heck? So this is where we're going to build it. The bed is going to be facing south. Well, it's taken me a long time, but my water elevator is now complete. Just checking in. I'm building a fancy system at the moment. This is a redstone hopper clock. So every like 30 seconds, it'll then move that trap door. This next bit actually involves a cake. We're going to put that there. Place a rail on here. Place the minecart here and push it into the cake. Take away the rail. Secure the minecart into place. Once I flick this lever, the block goes into the minecart. This allows both of the hoppers to pick up items. I'm very pleased to say I think I have finished all the redstone. I've just made this device here, which is very, very noisy. But it's just there as a precautionary measure to stop vexes. So once I get rid of all of these blocks, the raid farm will be completely finished. So this is where the raiders will spawn. They will go down here, float along this, fall down this chute, and then I will take them out and their stuff will go in the hoppers. I've also just realized I can't get out of here now. And before the farm is fully complete, we need to get a villager onto this bed. So it's off to the village to steal a villager. Do I take a child and put him on there on his own? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. You good, sir. How'd you like a job on a rate? No, okay. This guy's got no job. Come with me, and this could take some time. The very handy part about this is that we've got an ice track on the way. And very conveniently, it is night time, so the villager's gonna get into bed. I swear, if you somehow drown, villager, I will not be happy. Finally, he's in the bed. What I didn't tell him is he must now live on this island for the rest of his life. And now all that's left to do is for me to get Sweeping Edge on my sword. Finally, I've got the Sweeping Edge 3 book. And it turns out my sword is maxed out. That is very annoying. Thankfully, I can easily get all the books I need, craft a brand new diamond sword, turn it to netherite, and then apply all these enchantments. And I'm pretty sure this one can fit them all on. Perfect. I also need to get quite a bit more iron. I managed to find a diamond in this mineshaft and not to mention lots and lots of iron. I'm so close to finish the auto storage part. I just need a redstone torch there as well. I'm going to go for it. Okay, I got it. I didn't realize I was in flight mode. It was kind of easy. So now I can fill these chests with items I want to sort. And there we go. The auto story system is done. All of these chests will collect stackable items and then non-stackable ones like weapons, totems, enchanted books and saddles will go into these chests. I'm just going to put a load of composters along the top of here as well, just to make sure nothing spawns on there. Now, if I flick this lever, flick this one on and off really fast, quickly get some sleep. And now I need to go and get the bad omen effect. And here is the pillager outpost I know about. Here we have a pillager captain. And I will link the tutorial I used to build this down below in the description. Also, you only have to get bad omen once. All the other times after that, you'll just keep getting it again and again from the farm. Because pillagers that spawn with a banner up here will give it to you again. So I've not used this before, but if I go and stand in here, and then periodically the machine will drop me down here, this then pushes me right back up. Although, what? What has happened to my villager? It's gone. That means I need some milk to get rid of this curse. Get another villager. Name him special one so he doesn't get too upset. This time I'm making him completely safe. He will never escape. Take out another pillager captain. And this time it does indeed work. A raid has started. I just have to wait for these guys to fall in here. And here they are. And I could just keep using my sweeping edge to easily take them out. And as you can see in the top right, I've got bad omen again, which means when I fall down, another raid will begin straight away. And here we go. Another one starts. This also makes the raids really, really fast. And already I am starting to get lots and lots of loot. Look at all the totems. I've got loads. So I'm going to AFK at this farm for a bit and see just how many totems and loot I can get. I have spent the last two hours AFKing at this farm, which is the equivalent of like eight or nine Minecraft days. And as you can see, I have got... <laughs> I have got so many totems. So these double chests up here are all just overflow ones that are full up. And then what I've had to do is manually empty these chests because you can't auto sort non-stackable items. And then I just chuck them out over the edge. And I just chuck my chest by it. I, I, I need that. So yeah, it's a very OP system. I'll keep a full shulker box of these totems. I've also got lots of emeralds here. Yeah, not bad. I mean, lots of emeralds here. Right, let's make these into blocks. Just the sheer amount of loot here is crazy. In fact, we're gonna have to make two trips to transport all this loot. Sticks can go in here. And all these items are going to be great for my brewing. Even though this is giving me a load of extra gunpowder, at some point I do still want to build a gunpowder farm. Because if I do ever want to stand a chance of getting a full netherite beacon, I'm going to need lots and lots of TNT. I come up with a plan which means grabbing this beacon and then making a trip to the end. Next, I'm going to build a giant beacon. There we go. Beacon on top. Give myself haste two. And now I can mine obsidian extremely 
extremely, extremely fast. And that is two stacks of obsidian. That should be more than enough for now. My next plan is to build a portal in the nether that links up with this portal. This right here is the spot to build the portal. I was hoping it wouldn't be over a pit of lava. Let's light it up and see if it worked. <laughs> And it's taking me to a completely random place. Turns out I got the coordinates wrong. Take two. This time I'm certain that it's right. <laughs> Once again, it didn't work. This time I'm a million percent sure that it's right. Finally, <laughs> we made a successful portal thing. That was more trouble than it was worth. And I just want to use the rest of this obsidian to make loads and loads of ender chests. And I think the next thing I should do is build a portal room. That nether portal has been in the middle of nowhere for way too long. I'm making a few adjustments to this area, which involves putting lots of emerald blocks down here. And now I can have a fully powered beacon in my house, and I can give myself haste to add some red stained glass here. Yeah, I think the red beam looks pretty cool. And now I can mine stone extremely fast. This is so much better. And just to get all my gear back up to full durability, I'm going to the XP farm. I now have lots of gold and lots of levels. Oh no, I've, I've fallen off the ladder and I'm falling to my death. Oh, and I used a tome of undying. What am I doing? Ah, well, no need to worry. I've I've got a few spares. Well, would you look at that? It's day 271, and I also have 271 levels. So this so far is the first prototype. I kind of broke my nether wart farm, but the next plan is to make it look way, way better. My plan for lighting is to use lava in the floor with glass over the top. Finally, the new portal is in. I can finish placing the floor. Let's give that a light. After all this time, destroy this portal. Farewell, old friend. And this is the finished product. So this is my portal. Yeah, I don't know if I'll keep the golden emerald design. I mean, yeah, it might need tweaking. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you've got any ideas to improve it, let me know. And the real question is, will it link to the portal in the nether? Going through this way, it works fine. I'm going back through, it works fine. Awesome. And my next mission actually involves something in the nether. A warped forest is where I want to go. Let's grab a couple of these. And now I want to fish one of these fellas over here, put a saddle on him, jump on, and away we go. I also didn't know if you could attach leads to these guys, but <laughs> indeed you can. I wish I brought more leads. I could have had an entire army. Oh my goodness, what did I just do? Quick SP, drink this. Okay, yeah, you've got to be careful with Striders. I know Striders don't really smile, but I'm going to call this guy Smiler. He was my first ever pet Strider. You can also have a saddle on you. These are my Striders, but it's time to step things up a level. Now this is an army of Striders. Striders are hard work to move. This is more than enough for me. <laughs> and now I have 300 levels. I'm pretty happy with that. I also remembered that you can breed Striders with warped fungus. So now we've got lots of baby Striders. I think it's now time I began my next project, which involves getting some pet cats. There we go. I don't know what I'm going to call you. What on earth happened here? <laughs> There's been an explosion. Everybody's escaped. In this village, they all seem to have got stuck in this place. I have another pet cat. Let me open the gate, guys. Here you go. You can all get out now. Whilst my raid farm is very good for getting gunpowder, it's not enough. I want way, way more gunpowder. Look at that. We got a little baby cat. Which is why I'm going to make a full-on creeper farm. So to do that, I'm going to need quite a lot of resources. Which means it's time to get to work. I've just seen out of my window that those poor villagers are under attack. I feel like it's a bit pointless me doing raids now that I have so many tomes of undying. But I still want to protect these poor villagers. It turns out they're just all taking each other out. Let's get rid of you, and let's get rid of you. And I can drink my milk, and there's no problem. I believe I now have all the resources that I need. So let's get on with building this thing. I'm having to use a lead on these guys because they're being very annoying. <laughs> and just like with the raid farm, the best place to build this is over the ocean. I built a platform here which will take out the creepers, and then a hopper minecart will be running around here to pick up the gunpowder into this chest. And this platform up here is one of the platforms where the creepers will spawn. Another day is coming to an end, and all these trap doors are now down. Now all I need for this layer is the cat. And you, my dear, shall be the first one. I don't think cats like swimming ordinarily, but... This one's got no choice. Now I just stick you in a minecart, break all these rails, put another trap door down, and this is your life now. Now I just have some glass walls to add in, and now I can start on the second layer. And now it's cat number two's turn. It makes ten times more sense to just bring them both at the same time. In order to really expand my gunpowder farm, I've been traveling and got four more cats. I needed more blocks for my creeper farm, so I thought, why not kill two birds with one stone? I'm doing this below my house so I have haste two, but I'm also doing it at level 12 so I have a chance to find some diamonds. Okay, and fall in lava if I'm not careful. And I... Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness this armor is so OP. I honestly thought that was it. I had a fire resistance potion now. Why didn't I use it? Why didn't I see it? If that was how I died, that would have been the worst thing ever. Well, I've mined out this entire chunk at diamond level and well, 
There wasn't a single diamond. But I do have lots and lots of stone now at the very least. I was only going to do three layers for this farm, but now that I've started, I feel like I might as well go for it. So I'm wanting to make it super, super efficient. So I'm going to do at least 10 layers. And right now I'm building layer number five. I'm glad to say that I am now on the final layer. I had a spare cat, so I've actually done 11 layers, not 10. Come on, final cat. Your days of sitting down here are over. I was very thankful that if I flew up here, the cats do teleport after you. Otherwise, getting them up here would have been an absolute nightmare. There we go. You get in there. Let's box you in. Place a few torches is just so we don't have creepers spawning too early. And then I just need to add trap doors to these edges on this final one. And very conveniently, I have just enough. Next on the agenda, I need to build a slab roof. Just to let you know where I am, I am building a giant roof over this, which will then allow pack spawning and increase the spawn rates a lot more. I decide I'm going to have to work through the night to get this farm finished, since we're getting so close to day 300 and I've still got a few things to do. Just for reference, there's over 1,100 slabs up here. Now I can finish the area, which will take out the creepers. And now this area down here is finished. And now I have just one job left to do. And that is the place trap doors on the roof of every level. This really is going to take me forever. I haven't quite finished with the trap doors yet, but creepers are starting to spawn, so I'm thinking I should set the minecart hopper off. And you can see already, I've got a little bit of gunpowder. The sun is rising as day 300 is about to begin, and thank goodness I am now on the final layer. And now this top layer is also finished. And creepers have been spawning, already got 37 gunpowder. Now I just need to build an AFK platform. This is the little AFK spot that I'll stand at. And if I fly on down, we should be seeing creepers in the farm. Yeah, look at this. So there's a load at the bottom here. They're all dying. This is kind of the best angle that I can get on it. There you can see them all being taken out. There is a, there is gunpowder all over the place. I guess some of them must be dying from fall damage as well. But already in that short amount of time, I have got over five stacks of gunpowder. That is crazy. So yeah, I'm super pleased with this farm. It's way more OP than I was intending it to be, but I always prefer for things to be on the more OP side. There is still about five minutes left of day 300, so I'm going to go and AFK and see just how much we get before the day ends. The sun is starting to rise, so let's see how much we've got. <laughs> in that short amount of time, we've got over 11 stacks. And as the final day ends, that is how I survived 300 days in hardcore Minecraft.